Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we talk about problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I got married to my long-term girlfriend and our marriage has been rocky ever since. We were already two very different people with different perspectives, but fell in love during university. She was from a different department and we had to plan our dates as we could not be together at the university. She was a popular girl in her department and everyone knew about her. With popularity came controversies and I had to keep a deaf ear as there were so many people who used to talk about her. I trusted her blindly and have to admit that she never broke my trust, at least in the university. Everyone knew about us as we were a popular couple. Some guys were interested in her or a guy or two she had dumped so there was a lot to hear about her and we can say that she was a university celebrity. It was very tough for me to convince my family of this marriage. My sister knew her well and told my parents that she was way too bold for our family. She even showed my girlfriend's Instagram post to my mom and I had to answer her questions. Despite all this fuss, I somehow managed to convince my parents of this marriage. We got married after two years of graduation and I was happy beyond limits as she was the only woman I had dreamt of. She was perfect for me in every way. The initial months of marriage were happier than I can explain. She adjusted easily with my family, but my family was taking its time. We used to go out, eat out, went to movies and made sure to enjoy every little moment together. Things soon started to change when my mom started having issues with her dressing. My mom would say that my wife wore clothes that were too tight, too short, too bold. My wife would get irritated but would not say anything. My mom also had problems with my wife's whereabouts. She would complain about my wife going out with her friends and shopping too much and also said that she suspected that my wife used to drink. I thought it was just her grudges as she never liked my wife from the start. I ignored all the criticism and made sure my wife was not bothered by them. I was posted in another state by my office and I had to move ASAP. I was posted there for a year, so I thought there was no need to move along with my wife as I had to return just in a year. I discussed this with my wife and she said that she was never going to stay with my family, especially in my absence. I understood her concerns and rented a single bedroom apartment for her so she could stay there until I returned. She moved there a few days later and I left for my official job. We stayed connected over the phone and social media as this was the first time since the start of our relationship when one of us was miles away. We would try to talk throughout the day, but I would, you know, get really busy sometimes. She would call her friends over or go out clubbing and I never complained as I understood she would feel lonely in my absence. Three to four months passed and everything was well until one day when I called her and she was totally zoned out on the call. I asked her if anything was wrong, but she assured me that everything was well and she was just not feeling good. That was not the last time. My wife started ghosting me and I had to call her friends or my family to ask about her. My family would never know where she was and how she was as she did not contact them since I left. Her friends would say that she was okay, but I was not convinced. One day she exploded at me and was angry because I had called her friend to ask about her. She told me that I was a jerk and should have trusted her as she was not going anywhere and just needed some space. I told her it was all right and hung up. This piqued my curiosity as she never behaved like that before. I knew something is wrong, but I have no idea what's going on. My wife keeps on saying that everything is fine, but she ghosts me for days. I called my in-laws to ask about my wife and they said that they have no idea as she had contacted them a month ago. I asked my brother-in-law if he could go to her apartment and check if everything was all right. He assured me that he would go after the office and would inform me ASAP. My brother-in-law went to her apartment and no one was there. He rang the bell for quite some time and then called my wife to ask where she was and she told him that she was at her friend's place. My brother-in-law asked her to call me and stay connected and told her that I was worried about her. My wife called me after some time and asked who I was and how I dared to send her brother to check on her. I told her that I was only worried as she was not answering my calls and things were going weirder 
with every passing day. She asked me if I could just let her be and stop stalking her. I did not want to argue, so I cut the call. This never happened before, and it is sickening to the core. She has never talked to me like that and has never behaved as if she was bothered by me being protective. How can she change so much in a matter of just a few months? I sometimes think that it is the distance that has changed her. I was so worried to stay there and I, I had to return. I submitted an email to my office regarding an emergency at my home and requested my company to shift me back. I was back only after six months and my family was surprised as they were not expecting me. I did not inform my wife about it as I was looking for what was actually happening. I only stayed at my parents' house for an hour and left for my wife's apartment. I rang the bell and waited at the door. She opened the door and literally froze in her place. She did not even let me in and asked why I returned that early. I told her that I was going to explain everything, but if she could just let me in. I went in, asked her how she was, and told her why I returned sooner than I had expected. During all the conversation, she was restless and zoned out. She could not even talk properly and stammered. Just the next day, my wife told me that her friend had met with a terrible accident and she had to go to her house soon. I booked a ticket for her and dropped her at the airport. She called me when she had landed but did not talk for long. She again started ghosting me and did not respond to my calls or text messages. I pondered upon the situation and had so many questions in my head. Why was she not happy to see me? Why did she have to leave the very next day? Did her friend really meet with an accident or was she just running away from me? Why the hell would she ghost me like that? I stayed at her apartment while she was away and one day when I returned from the office, I received a parcel that was meant to be delivered to her. I was putting that parcel in the drawer so she might have it when she returned when I noticed that it was from a medical lab. I was curious to know what it was about. I opened it and found reports in it. I quickly started going through the reports and found out that my wife was three months pregnant. I could not even move. I didn't even have the guts to call her and tell her that I had found out her secret. It took me a couple of hours to get myself together and call her. She picked up my call and said that she was going to explain everything once she returned. She also told me that she would be back in a day or two. I guess she already knew the parcel was delivered through a text from the courier service. I am curious to know what she has to say now, what she is going to build up now. How would she justify this shameful secret? I cannot wait to see her. My wife did not return alone, but was along with the father of that child. I could not even stand their presence and wanted to beat the shit out of her. She told me that he was her junior in the university and has been crushing on her since then. They met in the club, got drunk and slept together. She went on and said that she knew she was betraying me and loathed her mistake but could not resist him. They had lived in our apartment for a month or so when she found out that she was expecting. She said that she did not know how to face me, so the only thing she could do was ghost me. She told me that she expected to see me after months and thought that she would have delivered by then as she dared not to abort the kid. As I had returned earlier, she had to run and hide or I could have known about the baby, so her boyfriend arranged space for her and she planned overnight to flee. When she found out that the reports were delivered, she knew she had to face me and explain everything about herself. She told me that it was a mistake and she was really ashamed of it. I told her that she could go with her boyfriend and his baby while I was going to file for divorce because I could not even look at her. She cried and begged that she never meant all this and it just happened. She told me that she did not want to leave and ask for forgiveness. I left the place and came back to my parents' house. I was devastated and could not even think straight. A few days passed and she called me non-stop, but I did not respond. I just texted her that she would be free to go anywhere she wants to, as I was not going to accept her back into my life. A-I-T-A? N-T-A, so sorry to hear that you had to go through all that. You supported her throughout trusted her when everyone used to bash her in university, fought with your family to marry her, 
got her an apartment until you were away and all she had to do was cheat on you and get pregnant. You put your 100% in, but she did not deserve it. I hope you find peace and strength to move on as this type of situation makes a person sick. NTA. OP should have listened to the things about her in her university. His family was right in saying that she would never adjust there as she was just not the type. OP's wife was such a filthy woman that she opted to cheat as soon as she was given the slightest chance. OP's mother had sensed her reality much earlier. How could OP stay that blind and deaf towards her true nature? I do not understand why she is begging now to go back. She should just get lost with her boyfriend and leave OP alone. Next story. My son is five years old. Me, I'm a 25-year-old male, and my ex, 29 years old, were at a kid's birthday party last Saturday that my son got invited to by one of his friends at preschool. So my son loves all kinds of things. He plays with Barbies, Star Wars toys, cars, stickers, literally anything that catches his attention. My ex usually doesn't like this, but if he wants something, I'll get it for him. If he's been behaving, and not all the time, because we try not to spoil him. Even if it's something girly. At the party, it was frozen themed, and the girls' parents were giving out tiaras in the goodie bags for girls. My son sees this, and he's like, how come he didn't get one? It was more the fact he wanted to feel included, or I guess he just wanted a tiara, but it didn't matter what the actual reason is. Either way, I asked my mom if they could switch goodie bags with one that also included a tiara, and she didn't mind doing that. He got his tiara to put on, so he was happy playing with his other friends after that. My son's mom, my ex, showed up a little later to the party. She saw him with a tiara, and she wanted to tell him to take it off, but I took her aside, and we started arguing. She was really, really mad. My ex said he shouldn't be wearing that stuff. It's not the first time we argue about this particular thing, so by now I'm already tired of it. I told her, it's literally not a big deal. What he likes, he's a little kid. But all she says is he's going to, to like girly things in the future if we don't nip it in the bud, and this could maybe make him think he's gay or something. TBH, that whole line had me so fed up and I pretty much called her a drama queen because she's making a big deal out of nothing. She wanted to talk more, but I just left her there alone to go back into the party. My ex didn't say anything to him about taking it off, so you could tell, though, that she was mad because it was that silent mad. For days, she hasn't let that go because I dismissed her valid feelings about our child, and she has a right to voice what she thinks when it comes to him without me insulting her about them. For things that matter, yeah, I'm always going to take in what she says because she's his mom. But about being worried about something in the future that shouldn't even be seen as a negative thing, I feel like it's not a big deal. But well, that's probably why I'm here, just asking if I'm TA for how I handled things with her. LOL, NTA, your ex is home transphobe and projecting it onto a five-year-old who just wants to play with stuff. It's really no big deal, and even if he ends up being more girly, gay, trans, then still not a big deal. Keep supporting your kid in whatever he wants to play with. NTA, but she is. You sound like an awesome, supportive dad. You should ask her, what does it matter if he likes girly things? Will it kill him? Will it stunt his growth? Will it affect his education and health? Or is it you have personal bias against the perception of having a gay son, which isn't even necessarily true? Next story. Okay, this happened last night, and to be honest, I feel a little bad about how I reacted, but let me know if you think my reaction was justified. My husband, 34, male, and I, 32, male, have been married for over five years. We have a beautiful daughter, three, who we adopted two years ago and means the world to us. We decided this past year to start a journey via surrogacy. Since I have a low sperm count, it is my husband's sperm and an egg donor, a friend of ours. Our surrogate is seven months pregnant and we threw a gender reveal party. Unfortunately, our surrogate couldn't be with us because she lives in Canada, but via Zoom. 
The party gathered close friends and immediate family. My in-laws were there. It turned out to be a boy, and my in-laws suggested that we pick names right there. I've already chosen one, but as I didn't want to destroy their happiness, I let them suggest names to see if they come out with the name. I've already chosen, but didn't say anything, and instead suggested names that I don't like. They only suggested to name our baby after their fathers. It was something like Peter, Jeremiah. I have nothing against people named like that, but I don't really like that for my child. I told them that we'd think about it, but they insisted on picking one. After insisting so much, I told them that I've already picked one. Then mother-in-law said, well, it doesn't matter. My son has the last say. I said, sorry. Then father-in-law replied, yeah, my son has more rights to name the baby since he is the real dad. I was furious and my husband was petrified, so I didn't let them explain what they said, grabbed their arms and kicked them out. My husband got back to reality and said, they are my parents and this wasn't the way. And as you can guess, I ruined the party. Everyone left and after that, my husband apologized for what his parents did. Today morning, mother-in-law called my husband and stated that she was so disappointed about my behavior and that I hurt her by what I did. Sister-in-law says I was far disrespectful and overreacted since I didn't give them time to explain themselves. So, AITA, did I overreact? Friendly advice. When people point out that you're not real family because you're not blood kin, run. These are the same people who will decide that blood relatives have to put up with them no matter how many boundaries they cross, no matter how much they gaslight, no matter how many promises they break. When you start looking at why your man didn't stand to defend you right away, it's because he's so used to not having rights because of blood that he doesn't remember how. When they openly call you out as not the real father, what they really said was, you're not a real partner, you're just a phase he'll grow out of someday. You're not the problem. NTA. I don't know if anyone has pointed it out, but the fact that your first child is adopted by both of you does that mean your husband's parents will play favorites with the second child because he's biologically related to them? I just want to point that out so you guys can get that resolved. Don't let your little girl think she's not important because she's not biologically related to a husband's parents. 